stops in here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> into it. Okay, tell me when you're ready. Okay, stand by. I understand your first major break came in 1970. Well, let's see, I was 18, so it was probably 1969. Uh, Neil Young had asked me to plan after the gold rush. I would uh, met him a year earlier at one of his shows in Washington. I snuck backstage, hassled him, just for advice. You know, my band Grin was going to L.A. to look for a record deal. Anyway, we became good friends, uh, and a year later he called me and asked me to play on After the Gold Rush. And he asked me to play piano, which I'd never really played. And he knew I was an accordion player, so the piano was like somewhat like an accordion. And uh, I was flabbergasted why he would want me to play piano. But in retrospect now, I realize what he wanted is what he got. He got an 18-year-old kid who loved his music, was totally into the project, inspired and also was playing an instrument that was so foreign to me that I, I played very simply, melodically and rhythmically. I left a lot of air, a lot of space, and uh, that's what that album was about. You know, the focus was on Neil and the songs. Um, being 18, I was really young, and uh, what age did you get an interest in Well, I've been playing accordion since I was six years old, and after the waltzes and the polkas, I studied classical music. When I was 15, I picked up the guitar as a hobby. When I was 17, uh, I turned professional after I saw Jimi Hendrix. And uh, God, I forgot I even what the question was. Oh, so, what's my favorite music? Oh, yeah. The Beatles really turned me on to rock and roll. Uh, I still think they have the best body of work in history, music history. And Jimi Hendrix really inspired me to turn professional. And, uh, you know, I love all great music. R&B, Aretha Franklin, Greg Charles, the old blues, Muddy Waters, Holland Wolf. The British invasion at that time in Motown really was the, the big body of work that inspired all of us, especially the Beatles and Stones. Having worked with uh, Neil Young and Bruce Springsteen and uh, Ringo Starr, uh, how does it differ from working on your own material in that what amount of personal input do you get on their material? Well, basically, uh, something I bring to all those projects my perspective is still that of a songwriter. So even if I'm playing piano for Neil or guitar for Bruce, I still play the song and not the part. And I think that's one of the things that's helped me. Um, it's a lot of fun working for those guys. It's not that much different. It's a little bit more relaxing. Because being a band leader is rewarding, but it's like a 24-hour day job. You have to hire everybody. You have to fire people. You have to deal with all the problems. And being just a guy in the band, kind of like relaxing How does your schedule work out of doing your own touring and your own recording and then doing that for others? Well, in, in the music business, at least for me, it's all kind of like done a few months at a time. Uh, right now I have my own record, I'm working on it. Uh, you know, in 89 I was about to start a record, I got a call from Ringo and an opportunity to play in, in an all-star band with some of my musical heroes. And I just uh, make time for those things. It's and, uh, rather flexible. Very flexible. And you know, maybe if my record company gets upset, I just be honest. You know, like, hey, listen, I can't turn down this opportunity. Uh, same thing with Bruce. Uh, you get a chance to play one of the great bands ever. For me, it's good for my soul. I'm a real team player. So I'm going to take those opportunities. And whatever price I pay is well worth it. Um, when you last played Cleveland a few weeks ago, you were uh, playing acoustic. Yeah. Yeah, today uh, I've got my brother Tommy on keyboards and guitars, Larry Crabb, uh, who is a sax player in New Young Blue Notes. He's playing keyboards and guitars. Uh, a really good bass player from D.C., Ronnie Neumeyer, and Johnny B. Badanjic uh, on drums, the original drummer and Mitch Ryder in the Detroit Wheels. I've worked with all these guys before, never as a group, and uh, tonight's our 10th show in Cleveland, and we're getting real tight. And, uh, the audiences were so great in Cleveland. I mean, they were great when I played acoustically, so to have a full band now is going to be great. It should be a lot of fun tonight. I heard that um, on your new release, Silver Lining, um, your bass player was also your producer. How did yeah. that decision? Well, in the late 70s, uh, Skunk Baxter, a guitarist from L.A., turned on to Kevin McCormick. He 
played uh, bass guitar on tour for me. Kevin Simpson has turned into a great producer, a lot of work with Melissa Etheridge, and uh, in addition to being one of my favorite bass players ever. Uh, so I asked Kevin to give me a hand in co-producing this record. We did it live in the studio. I sang live, and did live guitar work as much as possible. And Kevin was great. He kept the focus on a live performance, and uh, we left all the rough edges on. Can you tell us a little bit about the band Grin? Yeah, Grin was my first. I, I went through 10, 20, 30 local bands, cover bands, started doing my own stuff. But Grin was my first original band. I was a band leader, basically. We made four albums. Uh, I really loved the band, but we never sold enough records, and the record company really didn't want us to continue recording. So we did a farewell concert at the Kennedy Center, tried to go out in style, and I've been a solo artist ever since. Not a, I'm not a big fan of being a solo artist, but I, I love making music, writing it. And, um, it's been a challenge to put bands together for each album and tour in the studio and on the road. But I've been real lucky. I've had a lot of great opportunities. I know a lot of your fans consider your solo self-titled album to be your definitive album. How do you feel about that? Well, my first solo album was real special for me. I worked real hard on the songs. I had a good selection of songs. I think that's what distinguishes that record the most. However, even back then, as good as that record felt, I feel like just in the last five or six years, I've really started getting comfortable singing. And uh, I think I'm getting better as a singer, a songwriter, and a guitarist. Uh, but there was a lot of emotion in that record, and it'll always be a special. If we look through your audio collection, what artists would we find prominently represented? Well, right off the bat, the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix. And then you just find a real uh, collage of classic rock from, uh, you know, Aretha Franklin and R&B, uh, Back to the Old Blues, Holland Wolf, Chuck Berry, uh, The British Invasion, Old Motown, all the old Supreme stuff, Four Tops. I mean, I like all great music. Lately I've been uh, checking out Branford Marsalis, who I think is one of the great musicians around. I got to know him well on the Amnesty Tour. I try to just listen to a lot of different good stuff, but I guess the classic rock would be the focus of it. I understand that on your video, you saw the Valentine's and Bruce Springsteen and Ringo Starr. How yeah. did that uh, Well, I, I, just, I just got lucky, you know, Bruce sang uh, the harmony on Valentine, and I didn't even want to ask him to do the video. I thought he'd done enough, but I owed it to the record company, so I asked him, and he said, yeah, I'd love to help out, and he made time to show up, and the drummer, Andy, who was on the record, he was in New York, he was shooting in L.A., so he couldn't be there anyway. So I thought, gosh, you know, maybe Ringo will come down and just sit in on the drums. And uh, he just had flown in from Monte Carlo the day before. He said, sure, I'd love to help. It really meant a lot that they would make time to help around like that. How would you sum up your career up to this point? Well, my solo career has been real topsy-turvy. Had a lot of ups and downs. Never had that big hit record that you, know, you want. But I've gotten to play hundreds, thousands of shows for great audiences, still playing the bars, which is okay. Very grateful for those fans. And in addition, uh, mixed in with that, I've had a chance to be in some of the great bands in rock history. The Tonight's the Night, Trans Band with Neil Young, Ringo's All-Star Band. I've done hundreds of shows with Bruce and East Street Band. So, you know, keeping it in perspective, when I was 17, I wanted to be a professional musician. 22 years. I've seen some brilliant, talented people die, burn out, and fall by the wayside. So the bottom line is I've been very lucky and grateful uh, that today I'm singing and playing better than I ever have. And God willing, you know, if I just take care of myself, that'll continue. Thank you for being here. All right. Can we get you to do a couple of uh, stage night Sure.